مر الزمان تألقا وأضاء لي الدنيا طريقا مشرقا وهدى من الرحمن يهدينا به للصالحات وللمكارم والتقى هذا كتاب الله أعذب منهل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to the 15th episode and the 15th part of this series where we are looking at the 40 hadith pertaining to the virtues and the rulings of the Quran Today's uh, hadith we will look at the hadith of Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه where he reported that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said ما اجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله يتلون كتاب الله ويتدرسون بينهم إلا نزلت عليهم السكينة وغشيتهم الرحمة وحفتهم الملائكة وذكرهم الله في من عنده. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, No group of people or no congregation come together in a house from the houses of Allah reciting the Quran with one another and they studied between themselves except that tranquility descends upon them and they are enveloped by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels surround them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of them with those who are with him. And this authentic hadith reported in Abu Dawud. This hadith clearly establishes the virtue of reciting the Quran together in, in a congregation in the houses of Allah. Now, the house, the houses of Allah, as we know, they are the masajid. The masajid are the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some scholars, though, are of the view that other places can also be added on to this as well. Virtuous places, maybe like schools, Islamic schools, and madaris and madrasas. But otherwise, the best place to recite the Quran of Ashar of Adam is in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because, this is, because these places are pure places and they are always um, uh, attended to by the, uh, the angels. They always attend such places, in particular the angels of mercy as well. So when they come together to recite the Qur'an and so this shows the virtue of coming together to recite the Qur'an together. Now how does this occur? Now the scholars mentioned various different ways that people can recite the Qur'an together. Some say that those who when they come together they recite the Qur'an simultaneously. Another way is when one person he recites the Qur'an, the other people they listen. And so you can sit in a circle for example and you have a person reciting one page, for example, and the rest listen. After he finishes a page, then the next person next to him recites the Qur'an in a similar fashion. One of the benefits of doing that is that we manifest the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we don't just keep the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ourselves and in our own homes. Rather, we share the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with one another. It also makes it easier to concentrate on the recitation of the Qur'an because you are by yourself you can easily be distracted whereas if you sit together in a group then you find that you'll be able to concentrate much more another benefit is people can correct your recitation and you can hear maybe someone else's recitation which is more proficient than yours and so there are so many benefits of of coming together and listening to the Qur'an uh, 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 with, with one another وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ and they study it amongst themselves. So it's not just about tilawa, it is about dirasa as well, about studying the Quran, about understanding its meanings as well. So that should be a part of our learning as well. So not just about, again, the, the mere recitation, but um, understanding its meanings, maybe studying its tafsir as well, and, uh, and maybe the benefits that we can learn and what actions that we can uh, learn or points of action that we can learn from those verses. So what happens when people do that? That sakina descends upon them, tranquility descends upon them, and this is something that Allah subhanahu wa taala He descends upon the hearts of those who recite the Quran, and they are enveloped by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and they are surrounded by the angels, the angels of mercy, subhanallah, the angels of mercy. They come and they attend because Allah subhanahu wa taala has different angels and they have different roles, and there are a group of angels that which are known as the malaikatul rahmah, the angels of mercy, and when they attend such gatherings. There is a special degree of protection and care that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for such people. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of them in, uh, with, with those who are with him, meaning the angels. Allah makes mention of them in the highest of gatherings, in the, in the heavens above us. 
Allah will mention every single person in that gathering that is reciting the Quran and the angels make dua for that person as well so imagine being mentioned by Allah in the highest of gathering subhanallah and this is a form of protection for the believer and a form of praise for the believer as well and so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, revive this practice of reciting the Quran together in such gatherings inshallah ta'ala now after looking at all these ahadith about the virtues of the Quran the next hadith that we will look at in the next episode will be about the one who has no Quran in his heart what is the state of such a person so tune in for that episode inshallah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all tawfiq to be amongst the people of the Quran. Ameen. As-salamu alaykum الصالحات وللمكارم والتقى نور على مر الزمان